Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wa Ati Allah Ati Rasul Ulul Amri Minkum and always a reminder for myself and Abdul Aji so da'ifu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahalim but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. Alhamdulillah that in this month moving into the month of, of the Qamar and the full moon the realities of 54 alhamdulillah towards the realities of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and towards the Divine the Presence. And this is the, the year of immense emphasis on tafakkur and contemplation. That Allah opening and rahmah upon the immense realities of those whom have been granted a certainty and that they entered into this world of lie, the malakut and the perfection of the character in which they work upon their sicknesses, their badness and that which is displeasing to Divine the Presence. As a result of that reality they can reach to a level of certainty. And the people of tafakkur and contemplation, the people of meditation this is as we described last night all of Naqshbandiya's reality was based on tafakkur. It was the way in which to gain a, a proximity to Divine the Presence by the reality of contemplation and annihilating oneself and moving into these oceans of reality, into the heart and to the reality of the light of Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah neither on heavens or neither on earth but in the heart of the one whom believes. And entering into the heart of the one whom their belief was so perfected and so beautific and that's the light and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad is to enter into that light, enter into the protection of Allah and as a result to negate oneself and one's importance and all bad characteristics as a result of being nothing and negating then entering into that reality, into that ocean of tafakkur and oceans of contemplation. And that Allah grants a sincerity, a yaqeen that we have of uh, the terminology called yaqeen which is the certainty that they ilmu yaqeen, aynu yaqeen wa haqqa yaqeen. Their whole way. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. In this way of certainty, as people may say, well, oh, we are from the people of certainty. But then they have to be taking from the knowledge of certainty, they have to be studying in the, the vision of certainty. As a result of the knowledge of certainty and the visions of certainty that opens, that one plus one opens the reality of haqqa yaqeen, the truths of certainty. So it means that we must be fed from Divinely knowledges. And these are from the world of light and which have no time and they're timeless realities. They must be training an ayna yaqeen in which the, the eyes of this world can't comprehend that reality. And that all their training is to negate the physical eyes, close the physical eyes, to, to seek a comfort in which the eyes are closed. So that the inner eye of reality can begin to open. That becomes the visions of truth with their teachings and the immense realities on how to do that, how to achieve that. 
and that when they meditate and contemplate to keep the presence of the shaykh, keep the presence and the coordinates of the Divinely Light so as to protect them from any type of nefarious or negative energies that would begin to attack. As a result of this certainty that they've been fed with these knowledges of reality and then they begin to meditate and contemplate so that those knowledges become a certainty for the student. That they're opening their inner heart, they're understanding the knowledge with the spiritual vision. And as a result Allah begins to open the haqq, haqq yaqeen in which they can witness that knowledge and witness that reality. As a result Allah dresses the soul of that servant with certainty. And these are the mutaqeen, these are the ones whom Allah granted this reality of certainty and Allah is their defender, Allah is their protector. The 45th surah on this journey has an immense reality of tafakkur and mutaqeen that Allah describing these immense realities and that none will understand it. So already we know then the bulk of the majority of people it's not a knowledge for them, it's not a knowledge for the masses. So that this is a, a very rare commodity and as a result Allah then describes more, none know it but these people of tafakkur. So then we sought a way in which to open the realities of this tafakkur and this way of, of pulling the knowledges that Allah the treasures that Allah has hidden for us and how to achieve them. Why Sayyidina Musa moved quickly and he missed Sayyidina Khidr And then to come back, Ashab al-Kaf is to come back and now again take your path slower and meditating, contemplating so that you can see the signs of Allah upon this path. Means that the signs of Allah are there for those whom contemplate and slow their path down. If they're moving too fast and their life is too fast then these signs make no sense to them, they have no interest in, in retrieving them. It's about slowing life down and meditating, contemplating and coming in touch with oneself. Then when they read, when they hear the subats, when they hear the teachings in their meditative state and their writing they can begin to comprehend deeper and deeper into these realities and through their muraqabah and their meditation they can begin to witness what Allah wants them to witness. As a result of that they are growing towards the mutaqeen through the oceans of sincerity whom understood the reality whom saw the reality, who entered into the truth of the reality, Allah grants them the stamp of certainty. That it's not hypothetical, it's certainty for them. And as a result this is a protection from Mullah So when in verse 19 of Surah 45 Allah is describing I just said that you want to recite 4519. Rajeem. And this holy verse, its understanding is that there are going to be many shaitans on the path of these mutaqeen. And it's not something that's going to be easy that they're just going to run to the finish line and achieve what they want to achieve. That Allah is describing that shaitan has many of his friends that have given their allegiance to shaitan and their course is set to destroy these people. And Allah then gives a stamp of power 
where Allah is describing, no I'm the wali for them, that I am the guardian and protector for these mutaqeen, those whom reach a certainty. Why when shaitan was, was describing, Ya Rabbi give me respite, give me time, I'm going to attack your servants. And Allah said, attack whom you wish except my mutaqeen, they have a certainty. These mukhlis that you cannot go after them because they have a certainty. And Allah then giving an ayat al kareem that, I am the protector of his mutaqeen, I am their wali. As, as normal people are asking for awliya to watch over them, and Allah is then defining that, I am the one who watches over these awliya. Because as, as their station, of course shaitan then is coming after them to knock them out and to take them out of the game so that they have a clear access towards humanity. Then Allah then is showing this hierarchy of power that, no, no doubt that these people of tafak or these people of contemplation, these people of certainty are not leaving them in the hands of shaitan and the dominion of shayateen and all of their friends from dunya to unseen. From the dunya to the jinn whom give themselves and their allegiance to shaitans, they're all sent and, and they prepare this world to destroy humanity. And that's in all the other subsequent talks when we talk about how their vibration to destroy, the images to destroy, the teachings, belief, the sciences, everything to destroy the vibration and reality of humanity. Then Allah is describing that, for my mutaqeen I am their wali, I am the one whom is the guardian and protector over them and that's why it tells that uh, shaitan that, no you cannot attack my mukhlas because they're mutaqeen and as a result Allah is their defender and their protector. So it means then this is an immense station of realities in which the student is given the target is that, I want to be from mutaqeen, I want to be from the people of tafakkur, I want to have mukhlis and sincerity. And that's why there's these different names that we have Muslim, Musa and mukhlis because these are all these ranks that we said that if you just come to Islam, you entered into Islam means you're in a path of submission. But it does not yet mean that the student took to a path stronger and deeper to go towards faith. And that's why, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, amanu, O oh you who believe, believe that belief is a constant and consistent struggle to achieve more. That like the flowing water for wudu that you don't want your water to become stale, it loses its life force. And same with our faith and with our practices, Islam is not to keep it at a, at a stagnant level and many whom are born into it they, they do, they, they keep it stagnant, become stale and become something that is dying within them. And Prophet described faith and iman is, is like a shirt, it can become worn out, you have to take care of it and continuously revive it. So it means that people whom are coming into faith, coming into Islam, alhamdulillah, but that's just the beginning in which to struggle and to strive against oneself, one's bad characteristics, one's bad desires, as a result Allah will grant them sincerity, grant sincerity in their hearing. All five senses have to be granted sincerity, they have to have a sincerity in their hearing. Where they understand they hear all the garbage of dunya but they spend a time in which they try their best to hear the inspirations of their soul by listening to salawats, by listening to Qur'an, by listening to that which is peaceful and tranquil. As they do that they can begin to listen to their soul and to their inner reality and deeper reality. As a result of their struggle with their ear. Allah grants them sincerity within their hearing. The servant then begins to struggle because each sense has to be struggled with. When we're approaching towards Ramadan it's not just the fasting of the mouth, it's the struggle of each of our senses. The Ya Rabbi led me to struggle with my eyes, 
it's all the, the inappropriate that my eyes are being exposed to, take a path in which to close your eyes often. And to pretend that this is like my grave in which I won't see anything, I'll keep my eyes closed and asking for God's forgiveness for all that my eyes have seen. And daily asking for forgiveness, daily washing away all of the badness and bad visions, bad understandings, bad, bad that comes through the eyes. And as a result the one who struggles with their vision and with their eyesight, Allah grant them a sincerity. Because Allah seen that you're struggling with your eyes, means you're keeping your eye down, you're continuously closing and asking for forgiveness, you're continuously trying to wash and to build a vision more beatific. They see themselves at the Kaaba, they see themselves at Raza Sharif, they see themselves in the presence of their shaykh and they say, I'm struggling with it yet because it's not meant to be easy. Easy is that which has no value. So you turn on the TV and everything you see is it comes as an ease to you because it has no value for Allah, from Allah That which has a value it requires a struggle. So when they fight with their eyes to keep them to be clean and begin to make their tafakkur and contemplation to, to see beatific visions within the heart. When Allah sees the servant struggling then makes them to be muttaqeen for their vision. And we said from all of the senses Allah is dressing. Then Allah grant them then sincerity within the breath. That they understood the importance of their breath and to keep the breath to be clean, not to be exposed towards you know smoke and different things that would tamper with the breath, tamper with the purity of the breath. Then they begin to isolate themselves. That answers many things in life. The mutaqeen they're, they're not like normal people. When somebody taking a path to be mutaqeen they're trying to clean their eyes. So wh why would they go somewhere that exposes their eyes to every forbidden where 10,000 people are, are everything inappropriate, everything not correct. Means it gives us an understanding that, okay they say that this my guy's a Muslim and he's doing what he's doing, yeah but he's not on a path of mutaqeen. Those whom are the people on a path to mutaqeen, they won't take themselves places where their eyes are going to be in danger. Because they're spending all day long asking Allah forgiveness. That which is happens, it happens. But they're not taking themselves consistently into places in which their eyes are going to be in danger. How then they're asking for, for mutaqeen of their vision? Because if the one who's making tafakkur is not asking, the Ya Rabbi please grant me sincerity in my vision. They won't be meditating so they start to answer the, the questions all come in a row. So means the one whom is enrolled in a school of contemplation is asking to be mutaqeen, to be of a sincere nature in which Allah signs off on their sincerity then they have to nazar bar qadam. And that's what Mawlana Shah Naqshaban was teaching. If, if this is the station you want then ask yourself, why are you there at that place? Your eyes shouldn't be there, your eyes should be at your feet. Your eyes should be vision of your path and what you're, you need to accomplish within your heart. So it begins to answer many questions of people, can I go here, can I do that? You do whatever you want. But if you're enrolled to be mutaqeen, your fight and jihad is with your eyesight, not the hurting of other people. But coming against oneself. So then all these senses that we're describing they have their own answer. So the one who's mutaqeen of their hearing then they ask these questions on music and sound and all of these things, it answered itself. If you were asking for your hearing to be mutaqeen, do you think it's really appropriate to extensive amounts of sounds that have cursings and yellings and vibrations that are incorrect and to, to do that for four, five, six, seven hours a day in which they're exposed to that. And then you, we're wondering, how come I can't hear my consciousness? 
Because people will write, Shaykh, I'm doing all the things that you told me and I'm sitting and I'm meditating but nothing is uh, coming, I don't hear my consciousness. And that's why the, the system itself has its own safeguards. If I'm asking all day long, Ya Rabbi grant my sincerity and my hearing, first reply comes back then, why are you hearing those things, those sounds, those words? Means have a, have a safeguard upon your hearing. They sit in, in groups and in batches and they want to backbite each other and they love it, they love little groups of gossip and they sit together and gossip and gossip and then now you contaminate the hearing and it makes your hearing much more difficult and your struggle much more difficult. So those whom enrolled in that reality they begin to withdraw and they begin to self-isolate. Those whom are isolated Allah already then granted you that blessing. Because some people say, oh we want to go back out into the crowds, we want to be around, we want to… Oh, well all of that comes with a price. Those whom contis consistently out amongst the crowds of people, your eyes are in danger. Your, your, your senses are in danger, your breath is in danger, you're in somewhere breathing somebody, ten other people in that room are smoking. You've now endangered your breath. So how then you're asking Allah make my breath to be sanctified with your qudra because Allah will open on the breath of these believers like a fire that they breathe a divine fire within their soul. They ignite their soul with their breath when Allah wants to open their power and the qudra. Because alim al-qadir, qadir is coming through the breath. When Allah wants to divinely qadir and power it's through the nafas. So then the nafas, the breath had to be sanctified. So then they asked, the shaykh asked, what are you doing there? Oh these are just other people, it's not me, it's them. But then you're not going to achieve the sanctity of your breath because you're breathing in secondhand smoke, you're breathing in every intoxicant, every bad energy, it make your past twenty years longer. Then again, okay then they retreat. So they understood that in their lives, went, they say, okay if I'm working on my eyes I can go less places now, so they retreat. I'm working on, on my breath and I'm all these different people, now I have to retreat again because where am I going to safeguard my breath? These people are all smoking and doing crazy things. So it means that every attribute that Allah wants to open and the one whom's struggling to be mutaqeen and to reach sincerity in these five senses, it then begins to push them into their isolation because they realize more and more that their struggle for this station is not amongst the crowds of people. That as they take to themselves and begin to purify their vision, purify their breath, purify their hearing, purify their touch in which the, the hands and the, the subtlety of their energy, all of these so that Allah can begin to open for them the reality of taste. So that they can taste the reality, they can… they understand these haqqaiqs because they hear it with sincerity and they hear the deep inner inspiration, they see it with sincerity because Allah opened the khashf and the visions within their heart. And they breathe it with sincerity, means the qudra comes as something real for them. As a result Allah activates their bayah to be real, inna ladina yubayyunaka yubayyun Allah. Means those whom took the hand and took the hand of the shaykh, took the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah Ya Allah, Allah's hand is upon their hand. What, what kind of magnificence is that? What kind of immensity when Allah is describing, my hand is upon their hand and then Allah Surah Al-Mulk, Tabarakal Nadi bi yadhi mulk, that blessed be the hands that holds my dominion and my kingdom. And Surah Al-Yaseen, Subhana Nadi bi yadhi mulk wa malakut kulli shay. And Allah Gives his in Surah Al Yaseen, Subhan, glory be to the hands from Malakut that holds the dominion, that kulli shay, that encompasses everything. Again, the kulli shay, 
Then when Allah gives His glory onto that hand that reached the realities of Surat Al Yaseen Allah defining this from Malakut that their hand is, is, is in the dominions of the world of light and it's kulli shayt. Means the one whom hand is in Malakut it controls everything from the mulk because the Malakut was harder to achieve than the physical world. Means then their sense of touch when they sanctified their sense of touch and they abstained in the purity of their touch and Allah increased their bayat and the reality of their bayat that you are now your hand is inheriting the hand of your shaykh. That your hand doesn't earn haram but it only works for halal. It doesn't harm people in haram but it, it, it benefits and helps people because the shaykh's hand is from the hand of Prophet The Prophet this guy who is a Muslim is one whom you are safe from their tongue and from their hand. Means they inherit from these qualities that the hand has to be blessed not a source of people's uh, misery and torment and their hands don't earn haram and do everything haram but come and then sit and do dhikrullah. That they purified and sanctified their hands to be clean, the rizq to be clean, their way to be clean. And as a result they put their hands in service when they knew that my hands will testify against me. Well then give out food. So that to make your hands to testify towards goodness. That these hands whatever they did all their life, Ya Rabbi grant me forgiveness in my hands, that my hands to be of service to you. And that they're kind to people, kind to the lovers of zikrullah, kind to the humanity, kind to animals and they give out food and water to people so that the hand can testify, Ya Rabbi this hand we gave out this, we gave out this, we gave out this. All of these realities is why the shaykh implements all of these programs so that the hand can testify and then the feet. And the feet to testify that, Ya Rabbi that my feet to be muqaddam, let me to inherit the path of the shaykh whom inherits the path of Sayyidina Muhammad muqaddam as-siddiq and the inheritors and the holy sahabi and the muqaddam al-haqq in the way of Sayyidina Muhammad That to make my hands and to make my feet and my path to be on this way of righteousness and goodness. Means then those whom seeking sincerity and they understood these things, the questions become self-evident, right? You don't have to ask like, can I go here and do that? Can I inflict harm upon myself? Can I do this? Can I do that? If you truly understand what's trying to be discussed and what's being taught here is a station of sincerity and Allah's going to ask, what are you doing with those eyes of yours? What are you doing with these ears of yours? What are you doing with this breath of yours? What do you do with this tongue of yours? Why you speak so much? Why you speak so crazy? Why you speak so angry? Why you speak so violent? Why you speak all these things and you're trying to make your tongue to be sweet with dhikrullah and salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why then they describe to us Make your salawats 10,000, 20,000 a day, not 100 and 200. These ridiculous people come and say, We do 100 salawats. What 100 salawats? You gave your mouth now time to, to give every type of qayba, every type of backbiting. Keep your tongue moist and wet and perfumed with the salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad. Why? So that the tongue doesn't keep speaking bad, that it's continuously in the praisings of Allah Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala it's a zikr of Allah and the zikr of Sayyidina Muhammad in one. And so that to keep their tongue to be purified, to keep their tongue to be clean from all the backbiting. So means that everything they're doing for their senses is their struggle. When you understood that and you understood tonight's talk, it answers all of your questions on sharia. 
But can I mark my body up? Well, which part of these do you think is going to destroy your muttaqeen? Can I go to this event and can I go to that event where people are smoking, drinking and dress inappropriately? Well, it, it, that will actually attack all of your senses. So you lose your way to muttaqeen and it's like you're going 10 steps back and making one step forward, 10 steps back making one step forward. Then you email in two weeks or two years that I didn't get anywhere. Well, because look at the system that people are trying to implement. The system was to be self-correcting because they understood from their shaykh's notes when they were saying, I'm going to clean my ears, I'm going to clean my eyes, I'm going to clean my breath, I'm going to clean my hands, I'm going to clean my feet. That was enough for them to understand. They use that like a board that I want to clean these senses and then every day they can answer their own questions. Where I want to go, which one of these is it going to be affecting? What I want to do, which one of these is going to be affecting? What I want to do for work, which one of these will be affected by that? These were the posts and the pillars of their reality. Someone described that, please describe the pillars and the spiritual pillars of Islam. This all of this teaching is the pillars of Islam. That everything from the shahada, everything from everything that we've been describing is all the spirituality of Islam so that to open the realities of iman inshaAllah. We pray that Allah grant us an understanding and tonight's uh, lecture for people to write it down this way of mutaqeen. That what are the senses that we're trying to open, all five senses and that how we're going to purify them. If they can reach purity Allah grants a sincerity on that sense. They granted sense sincerity on their seeing, they begin to see with sincere vision. Allah grants sincerity on their hearing, they hear their inner consciousness because Allah is their defender. When he sees the struggle of what they're doing, it's drawing near to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So Allah then describes in Ayatul Kareem that Allah will be the defender of these muttaqeen and that's, that's their safety, their safeguard. As a result of Allah being the defender of the muttaqeen, what then Allah asked Prophet that keep your nazar on these people who are people of dhikrullah. That they're struggling against themselves, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem, keep your nazar upon them, not the people of the hype of dunya. So alhamdulillah we've been already granted from, from the Surat al-Kahf, the reality in which Prophet ﷺ's holy nazar upon those whom trying to clean and struggle against themselves inshaAllah. And Allah granting the enforcement and the power and the affirmation that, I am the wali of the muttaqeen. And that's, that's the, a great accomplishment and a great power in reality. We pray that Allah dress us from these realities, bless us from these realities and keep us in the company of those whom are within that reality of muttaqeen and that under the, the, the protection of Allah the nazar and protection of Sayyidina Muhammad the nazar and protection of Ahlul Bayt and Ashab and Nabi and nazar and protection of awliyaullah fi samahi wa fil arq. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.